Hello and welcome to another Leak Code Solution video. This is problem number 22, generate parentheses. For this problem, we are given n pairs of parentheses. Write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. For example, one, we're given an input of n equals three, and the output are the five valid sets of three parentheses pairs. And for example, two, we're given an input of n equals one, and our output is the only set of valid parentheses when you have one pair. Let's go through an example. In this example, we'll have n equals two. So we'll have two pairs of parentheses. And for this problem, we'll use backtracking and recursion to go through all possible sets of parentheses. This diagram visually lays out the problem and shows all the possible combinations of parentheses when we have n equals two. You can see that we only have two valid sets. So when we're doing our backtracking, we're only gonna wanna go through the valid branches so we can avoid a lot of the invalid ones earlier on to avoid having to do more work than necessary. So for example, in this first branching, we could either put an open or a close parentheses to start. So as we're going through, we'll only call our backtracking function when we have valid sets of parentheses so far. So to do that, we'll keep track of the number of open and close parentheses. These will both start off equaling zero. Before calling our backtrack function again, we'll check to make sure our open parentheses is still less than the number of our input number, or if our number of open parentheses is less than the number of closed parentheses. If our open number of parentheses are still under the input number, then we'll add another open parentheses and call the backtracking function again. Or if our number of closed parentheses is still less than the number of open parentheses we've had so far, then we'll add another closed parentheses and call our backtracking function. This is a bit of pseudocode that represents what I was just explaining. Right off the bat, we'll be starting with an empty string into our backtracking function. So our number of open and close is zero. So for our first check, our number of open parentheses is still less than our input number. So we can call our backtracking function adding an open parentheses. And our number of close parentheses is not less than our number of open parentheses. So we won't be calling our second backtracking. And since we've added this open, we can increment our open to one and we'll, we'll do our checks again. So in this case, both of these conditionals are true. So this is where our first backtracking branches out so we'll, we'll have two separate backtracking functions branching out and our first one is two opens and our second is an open and a close parentheses so we'll also have to keep track of our open and close parentheses separately and you can see right away from this branching that we're in this valid case here and we're not even touching this bottom branch and as we continue through this through backtracking we'll eliminate our invalid branches and get our two valid sets of parentheses so once we go through all our backtracking we'll be left with our two valid sets of parentheses and we can just output those so it'll be open open close close parentheses and open close open close parentheses let's jump into the code the first thing we can do is define our backtracking function we'll want to pass three variables to this function we'll want to pass our string our number of open parentheses and our number of closed parentheses the first thing we want to do is check to see if our length of our string is equal to two times our n and this is because n is the number of pairs of parentheses so our string will end up being two times n and we know once our length of our string is equal to two times n we can return because we're at the end of our string and at this point we'll want to append our current string to our output list of strings and we'll define that later on but for now we'll just call it our output list and once we've added it to our output list we can just return and exit our backtracking function next we'll want to add our two checks we discussed in our example so we will call our backtracking function if our number of open parentheses is less than our input n or if the number of close parentheses is less than the number of open parentheses we've added so far. So for our first conditional, when we call our backtracking function, we'll add another open parentheses, increment our number of open parentheses, and pass our number of closed parentheses. And for our second conditional, we'll add a closed parentheses and increment our closed parentheses number. And that's it for our backtracking function. So we'll go back to our generate parentheses function. The first thing we'll do is define that output list we used before. Next, we'll call our backtracking function for the first time. And this will want to pass an empty string and zero for a number of open and zero for a number of close to start. And finally, we'll return our output list. 
that's it for the code so let's run this made a couple of syntax errors in length of s it should be length of str and in both backtracking functions i put s again so just make those both str and in the second backtracking call i called close instead of closed that should be all of them so let's run this again all test case passed so let's submit our solution was accepted so that's it for this video if you like this content and want to see more videos like this make sure to check out my channel thanks for watching